going on, y'all? It's your main man, Mo. This is the With All Due Respect podcast, and we have Miss Lady Simone right here. And we have special guest, Minister Jeremy Frazier, New Vision Church right here in Greenville. What's going on, Jer? What's going on? Well, how y'all? I mean, everything Doing is good. well. Everything is well. I actually should have introduced you as Jeremy Frazier, a.k.a. Pastor Smelgood. Because that's actually <laughs> that's actually that's actually how I have oh, you saved man, in my phone. Like <laughs> but I mean, you know what? For the people listening, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a little quick backstory of why I call you Pastor Smellgood. We were um we was on a set of a movie that we were once uh we were once a part of, and it's my first time meeting and you came in. I was like, wow. I didn't say anything to you because I wasn't sure how to approach you. Because again, I understand right. that I'm an acquired taste. And I just said, man, to hell with it. I said, excuse me, sir. I just want you to know, <laughs> you smell great. You smell like a plethora of sample colognes that they give out in dealers all at one time. <laughs> just, I just thought I'd let you know that, man. So, um, man, thank you. Hey, I always try to smell all right. You know, as long as I don't stink, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no I, I'll be honest. You passed all right. I'm not. Matter I'm fact, about to say it had to be passed all right because you came and told me about. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was, I was excited. Matter of fact, what kind of cologne you have on right now? Uh, I'm actually wearing Tommy Bahama, uh, actually for the day. This is, uh, summertime, you know, I figure like Tommy's a little, it's a little lighter fragrance, so, so, uh, wearing a little bit of the Tommy Bahama. <laughs> Sounds so, like a fragrance country yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that, cause that's why I was going to ask you, how many bottles of cologne do you have and how frequent do you buy cologne? Um, um, oh man, let me see, uh. Not that many. I'll I'll probably say maybe 15, 20. Uh, Not that many with 15, 20. Yeah, 15, 20. uh, I try to buy them maybe once or twice a year. Oh, okay. So, you know, it's like a few bottles here and there. Like, if it's something I really like, uh, like something I really like right now, like that coach, uh, that that coach platinum, (laughs) probably the best smelling cologne I have ever smelled in my life, so... Do you yeah, let so your wife? Uh, too, do you let your wife choose any of your cologne? Pick out your cologne? Um. Okay. I got a funny story about that. Okay. So. <laughs> <check this out. laughs> uh, I used to, but here's the thing: I had to stop because she would pick something out. Right? She was like, "Oh, baby, it smells wonderful. This is the best smell." And then, like, once I saw wearing, she's like, "Oh, baby, thanks." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So after that, I'm like, "Man, you know what? I'm just gonna wear what I like." This. But I think. I think what's happened, I think it's fair to say that sometimes your body, um, yeah, it kind of mixes differently. It may smell good in the bottle, and once it gets on your skin, it kind of gives a different smell. That is so true. Yeah, so, so true. I'm thinking that's probably what it was. But see, also going in, what, what Pastor Smellgood, a.k.a. Jeremy Frazier, <laughs> is failing to also <laughs> tell within this, he wears fine garments as well. And Come understand, on, and understand, secrets, man. Come and, on. Uh, and understand these fine garments <laughs> come with a fragrance all by itself. <laughs> I mean, this when he sure. can't go ahead. My mama told me something like when I was young, right? She said, You have to look how you feel. Mm. So I that stuck with me since I was a kid. So I always try to look my best and smell my best because I mean. Uh, she told me something. She said it may be, it may, it's always your first time meeting somebody. So you always want to give off a great first impression to them. So you know, I just try to opposite from me there. Fair enough. Fair that's enough. some good rules right yeah, there. That's definitely, she definitely left a lasting impression and you are definitely seeing it all the way through. I will honestly say that. Well, thank you. Thank um, you. you know, I actually wanted to go into this right here. A certain way in my head, but I actually scratched it this morning. I actually just want to have a conversation with you. And um, me and my wife, okay. I'm sorry, ladies, small, we like to have a conversation with you. Um, my wife, she's a PK, right? A PK. Okay, okay. Yes. She's, a, she's a PK. <laughs> and myself... Shout out to the PKs, then. Yes! Oh, you're, you're a PK as well? <laughs> yes. My uh, my dad was a minister uh, growing up, and um, he had his own church for like a little while, so... Uh, yes, sir. So. And my my grandfather is like a pastor as well. So long line, yeah. long line. So I definitely know how it is. Yes. Be a PK. Yes, and it's look what they say it is. It's not who we are. <laughs> I 
Okay. No, no, not at all. No. 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 So Jeremy, you not never. Not everybody. No. So you never, you never lived up to that stigma of a pastor kid. No, man. No, man. Okay. To really be honest, uh, I had like a little stint, like you know, and maybe I might have like you know, not been all the way on on course, as my uh, mom would probably say. Okay. But never really just got that wild out uh, thing, because. For the most part, man, my parents were actually pretty legit. Uh, and, I, and particularly like my mom, uh, she was pretty much who pretty much who you saw in church was who she was behind closed doors. So I really believe that that, that made a lasting impression uh, on not just my life, but uh, probably my brothers and sisters as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing that's fair, I know for me personally, one thing that I always carried with me, there was things that mom and dad would say, and not only that, as growing up as a pastor's kid for me you know it was certain expectations that you knew that your parents had you know what i'm saying so it wasn't trying to you know like not embarrass them but you did not you you did not go against that and and they never said well don't go out here and don't do this you just knew you just knew not what to do and what not to do and as a pastor's kid for me I would never have wanted to see hurt in my parents' face because they did right. everything that they could have done for us the best that they knew how. And for us, it was great. So you don't want to put right. disappointment, you know, and they gave us so many different, it was like the things that they said and told us was different. You know, it was like our right. our foundation so much. We were rooted just a little bit differently. And I tell, and me and my sisters them talk about that all the time. Like, yeah, we knew what not to do. And even when we did try to test the waters, it was almost just like, oh, no, no, no. And even to this day, you know, my, pa- my father passed away when I was 13. But even to this okay. day, there are things that I will not say or do in front of my mom. And it's it's so true. And some people would say, "Oh my goodness, that's crazy." But like, I would never say, "Oh, you lie." Like, I would never even say that to my sister in front of my mom. And it's like, yo, right. lie. And people would say, "Lie is not a bad word." But we grew up with certain things, and it was disrespectful to do certain things. And we know, even of age, we don't do those things. Right, right. It's 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 crazy because like your parents kind of when you're when you're like a PK. They put so much in you, mm-hmm. and it's like, it's an unspoken rule. Yes. And I don't say rule, but you actually know the standard that mm-hmm. they have and the standard that they are up are upholding you to. Mm-hmm. Uh, some, something that was cool that I thought about my parents, well, actually recently, it's crazy, uh, after like being with my mom on Mother's Day, and it just reflected, you know, it just kind of took me down a path of, you know, we are who we are as a result of how our parents were, good or bad. Yep. And you know, I was just kind of thankful that, you know, she, you know, she, she was so instrumental in my life and making sure that I knew the word of God and, you know, like knowing how to break it down and how to, uh, you know, pray and like really live mm-hmm. right. And like, uh, it was, it was, it was a really cool experience because like my parents, like we had family devotion, y'all. I mean, and I know, <laughs> you know, being a PK, how that was like my dad did not play around he didn't get any sleep he didn't care what hey it's time it's time to get up we about to pray and read his word and break it open so it was a real you know it was a real cool experience but it's crazy because when you're pk you just say that that's normal yes but you you know but it's like you know the older you get and you start talking to different people you're like you know it's, it's not it's not that it's not normal but everybody didn't get to share that same yes. type of environment so so I'm really thankful for it now. Yeah. Everything for me. And I will say before you say something, um, Mo, because one thing I know for me that was interesting in what you just what you just said, how growing up was different. What even made it extra different for me? I'm not originally from the Greenville area, the city life okay. as they would call it. So we grew up in the country. So that added an extra thing because we are totally different than people who live in the city. You know, we kind of, okay. it's kind of like you, everybody know everybody, you wave, you know, you're going to respect everybody. If this person saw you do something, then you're going to get in trouble by this person, mama, uh-huh. dad, you know, so it's all of that. 
played a major, major part. And I think sometimes people don't understand that. So it's so significant when you say how the things that we felt that was normal and then adding that on top for me, it's like people always looked at me like, well, dang. Right, right. <laughs> Right. And you know, let me ask right. y'all, I want to ask both of y'all a question since both of y'all were actually raised up in church and y'all both were PKs. What difference do y'all see in today's, I guess you would say religion and today's way of church versus how it was when y'all was growing up? Because keep in mind, y'all adults and y'all was viewing it as children. And I guess you would say mid-teenagers as well. So mm -hmm. what, what difference do y'all see in that? I'll let him answer first. All right, go ahead, Pastor Smell Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, um, it's crazy because I was on two different ends of the spectrum. So uh, I went to church with my grand with my grandfather a lot. Uh, he was actually a FBH pastor, so which is the five baptized holiness pastor. Um, but then my parents, we we actually went to a non denominational church. Okay. So you imagine it is uh, FBH at that time was more of a stringent type of. Uh, mm -hmm. environment so it was more of a what you wear where you go mm -hmm. uh what you watch uh, type environment and so versus when i actually when, when i went to church with my parents it's more of a how is your relationship with christ mm -hmm. so it wasn't so much outer and rules and regulations it was just more like how is your relationship so it was really different to like see them both mm -hmm. and i would say uh now okay the christianity then now is i i feel like in the early days uh it was more of a everybody went and so it was more family and everybody had expectations for everyone versus now uh maybe not our generation but the generation of tabit younger a lot of them don't go so it's, it's so it's it's a little different in like in in most households then both parents went even if they didn't live it or if they didn't believe it they both went. Now it's more of a thing of maybe one one parent may go or you know or now like the ones that are going they're kind of going with their grandparents. So it's totally different than you know versus, versus then. Yeah. But I would say the major difference is is I feel like in these times people are more inquisitive and they and they ask more questions about uh christianity versus then like we just kind of knew it and accepted it but now it's like uh this newer generation is ha has more questions because they really want to know is this right what i believe so it's 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 totally different to me and ladies and gentlemen before you uh -huh. um, actually say your piece how do you feel about the inquisitive youth I actually think being inquisitive is great because I'm a firm believer of if you don't know why you do something, then you'll just be doing anything. Okay. And so for you to ask questions about why do you be, lets me know that you really want to learn because you really want to live it right. And you really want to, to not just live right, but you actually want, want to make sure what you're doing is right versus when you don't ask questions and you just kind of accept that kind of leads to the mentality of i'll just do it because and that almost creates uh, a copycat mentality of i'll just live the way my grandparents live versus actually learn to follow christ for yourself mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's totally different though yes so, and i i would have to totally agree with you and um i grew up ame so um, okay. I had a lot of friends who grew up um, holiness and that was, it was a difference even from us being in school, you know what I'm saying? Like just seeing right. the two differences that, that was um, very, very interesting. But one thing that I would say that, you know, we knew God, my father and mother put that in us. And one thing I would say, um, as I continue to grow in Christ for myself, that I began to learn was how to develop a relationship with God. It wasn't so, just like you say, a lot of people, like Mo was asking about the youth, everybody has opinions about things. But I think once you begin to 
read your bible and once you begin to to ask people who you really trust you have to find that person who you really trust and that leader who can help you get to where you need to be in christ as well i feel like when you begin to get to know god on on your own it's a whole nother level from the things mm -hmm. that i learned from my parents you know as a child they taught me what they were supposed to teach me then i had to go another level because right. I had to take right. what they taught me, but then at this point, I'm creating and developing a relationship, and then I'm starting to understand. It's like a little pieces of the veil begin to, you know, come undone, and I'm starting to have to understand. Like, okay, I remember, um, and I will share this because I thought this was so significant. I had so many significant things that happened in my life that made me go back to what I always say: you will always go back to what you know. And my the oh, things sure. the things that my parents have taught me, I always went back. I may not listen when they tell told me, but oh, I right. always went back. And I remember there was a time when Mo was going to do something significant in his life, mm -hmm. and I was kind of like up and down, and my mom couldn't be there for me. And I I was really wanting my mom to be there because I know she would have been that strong anchor, but she was she had to be in a position to where she was there but for my kids but not in the same you know in greenville so at that point i would talk to her every day and then i remember that during our talkings we would pray and we would cry together and we would just you know worship together whatever it was that we had to do and i say you know what i have to go back to what i know and what right. i knew was the altar and I remember going to church and I remember putting Marin's name in a um prayer in a prayer box. I didn't even know we had a prayer box in church. But <laughs> I, I remembered and it was just like being led there was where I can really, really say that my relationship with God kinda went to a whole nother level. Cause I just laid wow. it all out. And um, if you would, let me actually speak on what she may mention to as far as myself. What she's speaking about is about with cancer. And I pray I did not grow up in church. Let me go ahead and say that. Um, I prayed on my own, you know, God is good, God is great, you know, so forth and so on. But it wasn't until I actually went through that bout that I found myself in a place where I had no other choice but to rely on him. Especially on someone like my, especially with someone like myself who at that point even to this point now, feels like I can do everything on my own. So at that point, it actually forced me to rely on him. So that's when my faith started. So I actually went through the entire Bible. I did not read it. I did the audio. I will say that. So with that okay. being said, it left me it left me somewhat conflicted because I don't have that background that both you and Lady Simone have. So it kind of left me to read and understand on my own, but then also pick up the phone and call people that I trusted, preferably Pastor Johnson and, and, and uh, my neighbor I grew up with, Lee Grant, and uh, I think he's a bishop, I'm not sure, but nonetheless, I started to actually search for different things, so in the midst of it, I found myself in like a tug of war situation, like am I losing myself to do this? And then one person said, well, it's not one of the things, Mo, where you stop doing anything. You just continue to read and believe, and he will remove things that's no longer Why? no longer suitable for where you're going. So, and it's almost like when we spoke about it the other day. So then I was asking myself, is it okay for me to listen to rap music? Oh man, is it okay to watch comedies that have crazy cursing in it? Oh man, so it's just one of those things that left me conflicted. So I guess, like I said, we spoke the other day as well, um, Jerm. What I would like to ask y'all is, do you think, again, because I did not grow up in church, do you think at some point, I guess you say religion needs a, a, a revision of some sort? Uh, I mean... Like, like a, a, let's, let's update it. Like, no, it's okay for you to enjoy this right you here. You know, one it's thing, okay I don't to... know if Pastor Jeremy is, can... Minister. Minister Jeremy, I'm sorry. If Pastor you can... Smoker. I don't know if you can agree with me or not on this, but I know one thing that I will all, I was always taught was that um the word of God never changes. Right. So this world absolutely true. Absolutely. <laughs> this world will change, 
But that right. remains the same. So, okay, you know, so but what, let me say this too, because right. I'm gonna go because one thing that my family and I started doing, which I thought was so so interesting, was that it's so great, was that on Fridays we have a prayer call. Well, it's it's like a prayer call. It's like a learning. We read the Bible together. We talk. And my mom was on that the first time this Friday passed, and I had we was st we started reading the Book of Daniel. And I had some questions and it was so refreshing to hear her and my aunts be able to just speak to us about the questions that we have within the Bible. But one thing that we really stated on the line and that we, that's a rule of ours as a family, because it's aunts, it's cousins, you know, it's our, our family. One thing that we really stated was you have to meet people for where they're at in life right now. But so as we continue to have this meeting every Friday, we will realize that as we dig deeper and deeper into Christ, their taste for certain things changes. Okay. So, yes, it does. Absolutely. And that's how I look at things. And that's even how I look at when I meet people. Because I can meet, people look at me and say, well, how can you interact with so many different people? And now trust me, there's some people that I, I, I choose not to mix and mingle with by choice right. but if i'm around somebody and i know i'm supposed to be in that in the presence of that person despite who they are or what they it's something about me that's attracted to that person that i gotta give this person or that person gotta give me and through time you mm -hmm. will see that god would change your situation mm -hmm. and okay. change to, and through you he can help change that person let me expound on what i mean by revision yes, as well let me expound on that right there when you look at the traditional, I guess you would say, song worship, it's different than the Kurt Franklin stomp and the Lecrae's of now, right? We can, okay. go, we can go even as far as the presentation, the package of the minister or the pastor was typically suited, like suits. But then we have a gentleman okay. like Pastor Keon, who my wife enjoys, on yes. a Sunday morning out of Houston. And yeah. I, will even, I will even put you in the same breath but, you know, Pastor Keon, he comes in with sneakers, jeans, and a cool shirt. And I think, right. if I'm not mistaken, um, Jeremy, you actually not so much dressed down, but you don't typically fit the description of a minister's attire all the time, do you, as far as when you're up there preaching? Um, absolutely not, sir. I do not like suits whatsoever. <laughs> so, 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 I do not. So I that's what I mean. This, but that, yo, it's crazy. That is just not how God designed it. Okay, to go back to your original question is, you know, does it need a revision? Okay, no, because Scripture does say God is the same yesterday, today, and for forever. Uh -huh. Now, the method in which you reach people may change. So, mm. because you had actually mentioned the Kurt Franklin's and, you know, and the Lecrae's now is totally different from maybe the James Cleveland's and mm. uh, the Mahalia Jackson's or, you know, it's, it's totally different from them. Well, because as, as things begin to change and get different, the word of God doesn't change, but the way you deliver it might. Okay. So, for example, uh, for example, when uh, Jesus was here, he actually spoke in parables. You know, because in that, that time, parables was how they, parables was a cool way of talking to people so, so they will understand the level of the word, but just on a simpler way on a simple level. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the way we deliver the word now, we deliver it in a simpler manner, maybe dress different because our culture is different. Mm -hmm. So in Jesus's culture, uh, he dressed the way they did uh, because when Judas uh, came to betray him, they didn't recognize, they didn't know who he was. There was nothing about him that stood out. So they actually had to, you know, he actually had to betray him with a kiss so the people know who knew who he were, was. And so kind of like now is I love to dress the same as everybody else because you can mix and mingle with people. But once you open up your mouth and start talking, they, they can see that there's something different about you versus just your outer appearance. And, you know, sometimes, you know, suits have been, you know, uh, suits and gators have always been a thing that people recognize pastors for. So we, we don't we don't want to fit that mold because people, you know, the drug dealer on the corner or. You know, uh, or or even the gang members, they can't really identify with Susan Gators, but they all can identify with Jays and T-shirts and Nike. So, I mean, it's, it's those type of things that we that we that we want to do to bring the Word of God 
not change it, but change the the manner in which we deliver it now. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. That so, was good, right so there. So there was a revi- there's a revision within the packaging and the approach to, but def- but there's no what? change within the actual word is what both of y'all no, stand sir. on. Yeah, I, I no. stand I, on I, the I, word, I, like I, I say, say right because now. you know one thing that I always go by, like they say, you know, God did it before; He could do it again. So I stand on that, and that's yeah, a part of my faith. You know, if He could sit there and heal somebody a hundred years ago, He can heal your body too when you was going oh, through what oh, you oh, go I'm through. Definitely a, a so I had to sit there, but that's something that I have, I had to believe. You know, what I'm saying that I, I knew that I knew that I knew during that time. Cause that's all I right. that's what I stood on. So that goes to show you that the word it ain't gonna change. And either despite right. or whatever or however it turned out, you know, that's the way it was supposed to be. All right. Right. Well, well we have and, a, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. And, and and I was gonna say scripture says that there's nothing new under the sun. So, you know, a lot of the things that we're seeing now, this is our first time seeing them, but I believe a lot of these things have happened before. I mean, uh, you take like something like a Sodom and Gomorrah, which may be a modern day Vegas. I mean, so a lot of these things has, has been here. And so, so if, if we can just, uh, you know, try to rely on, on the word of God and let it do what it's supposed to do, I believe that people really will change it. Really will. You said Vegas and is a modern, well. you said Vegas is a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, I mean, it's called Sin City, right? Wow. Right. Well, Jerm, I got a question for you that I'm going to let you go because I know you're at an event right now. Again, with me traveling and learning and furthering this walk with uh, God, I see certain things online, man, that just that just leaves me baffled. You know, when you see certain things like the pastor waving his coat and the whole congregation falls down, then they're sitting there like, boom, you're done. Boom, you're done. You're just sick. Boom. So I'm sitting there like, so first thing I do, I go to my wife. I'm like, yo, why are they doing this right here? I don't understand because if they're not doing right to me, I feel there's a nice condo with a doorman in hell waiting on them with some hot tea. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand wow. this right here. Why are they going about doing this right here? Can you can you help me understand that, please? Okay. Um, uh, that's a very complex one. Okay. <laughs> not not everybody uh, can handle and I know this is maybe a churchy term but I'm going to explain it though maybe not be able to handle the presence of God exactly the same mm-hmm. so uh, okay there were there were times where I've I, I've actually grown up in uh, they like to call them miracle services uh, but as one of my pastors as, as one of my favorite pastors Pastor Medall calls it it's just it's just the presence of god Mm -hmm. and so not 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 everybody everybody when the presence of god is there they treat it the same so for like example uh if you're in the service and you see people laying hands on people some people may uh, may legitimately fall out just from a hand or some people you may speak a word and it's not it's not necessarily that it's a game it's just everybody the the response to the presence of god is totally Mm -hmm. different uh, it's kind of like uh, Pamela Man had a song. She said, uh, you know, when I'm in the presence of God, you know, like when I cry, will I be able to stand? And we see that through the word of God all the time. There were some people who ran up to Jesus. There were some people who, uh, like the woman with the issue of blood, she came trembling. And so it's just how, how you experience the presence of God is, and, and respond to it. It's sometimes different because it really depends on sometimes the level of how close you are to God. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I've never read anything where the disciples responded like that, but that's because they were in his presence all the time versus you had different people who were not in his presence. So they, they, they respond differently. And so I don't think that is games. I mean, obviously with, with anything that, that uh, you do, I mean, Jesus said it best. I mean, there 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 will always be wolves in sheep's clothing, but I honestly believe that there are a lot of good men and women that are just experiencing the presence of God, and they some of them don't know how to handle it, and some of them are just handling differently. And I and I would add to that because this is so interesting that we are having this conversation because I saw a video this morning, and 
I think Pastor Keon posted it on his Instagram, and it was a lady who was just in a car accident, and I she, right. oh my goodness, yeah. I sent it to my sister. I felt, yeah. when I say I just bursted out in tears, I think I watched yeah. it multiple times, was and it's a short she clip. She was on the like, sidewalk saying that she was like talking or something of that She nature, was speaking in tongues. And somebody was trying yeah. to pull her yeah. away. Yeah. I, I seen that. I and seen that. that right there was so powerful to me because I, it's like I saw God all in that. I understood wow. her praise, and I was there with her on that level. It was like I just felt something, and I was talking to my sister because I sent it to her like six something this morning, and she was like, oh my goodness. She said, I felt that all through that. I was like, a lot of people don't understand what was happening. That was a different right. type of praise in that video. Right. And it was so powerful. And even the lady who was recording it, she said, that's nobody but God. Yes. So right. it just goes to show you, you that. Know, uh huh. I was going to say, sometimes when God brings you out of something and you know that you shouldn't have walked, walked out of it, your response to him is totally different. Yep. And, you know, versus, um, I believe Jesus said it best. Jesus said, you know, it's kind of the one with the most debt versus the one who didn't, who didn't have that much. Who who would be more grateful? So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, man, you know, uh, all of our lives, nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us know, like, we, we should have been dead. We should have been shot. Some drug deals should have went sideways. I mean, there's a lot of things and that we that should have done and when have happened to us but when you know that god brought you brought you out of the thing mm -hmm. your response is something different like um about four years ago uh i was actually heading to um to actually minister's class uh my uh pastor at the time cars uh his name was cars cohen i was headed to his ministry class and you know we were going through classes so we could be licensed and ordained well as i'm heading and i'm driving towards his his um uh, his house it was raining really bad well, so I'm on 385, and my car, I kid you not, it starts fish selling. Like, it just starts fish selling, right? And wow. so it starts fish selling, and then literally in the middle of the highway, my car uh, does a 360, spins wow. around in the middle. Mind you, there were cars on my left, and there were cars on my right. I kid you not, as I'm spinning, you could feel the angel of the Lord move my car. When I tell you, I spent around, hit hit the wall with the left side, spent back around and hit it on the back side and landed perfectly in in the, I don't say median, but on the side of the road facing the opposite direction. Mm. Like perfectly in the lane, perfectly. So cars were still able to come by, no, nobody else hit me, nothing. So as soon as I jumped out of the car, I thank God and tell him, I thank you for your angels watching over me. Mm -hmm. I could have been dead right there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's times like that with, where you can't really explain how it happens yeah. and you walk out of the thing. But to, but, but to the average person or to the cop that was there or to the other, you know, to some people that were watching, that man seemed strange. But when you know God has delivered you from something, I mean, you know, you have to give him praise right where you are. That's right. That is so true. That is so true. And I feel like a lot of people, like I say, like they say, a lot of people may not understand your praise, but you still got to praise them regardless. And I tell Mary all the time, you know, it's God when you can't even explain how it was that you came from what you came from. Right, right. Because it's it, God does things in a way to where it's like nobody else going to get the praise but him. Right, right. And and I love them because that's that's actually one of the cool things. Um, and going back to something else you said, like I think that's the nature of God. He wants to show his kids off, and he uses the most uh, the people with the most messed up passes, and yep. you know the, the the people everybody counted out. He loves to use those type of people to mm -hmm. show off what he can do, and you know and. You know, uh, going back on something that you said, that's why we really can't be afraid to be around those people because, uh, I mean, going back to Scripture, Scripture says greater is he that is in us. So, you know, there's, there's always that, it's always his presence that's in us that actually draws more mm -hmm. more people to us as a result of him. Yes. And so, you know, we just try to leave them back. 
And there's a, and I tell uh, Marin all the time, there's times when you would come in kind of with people and you know there's something special about those people. And there, and right. I remember a couple that I met a long while ago when I worked at a daycare. And I always say something special about them. They never, like, okay, had to carry their Bible and walk around and say, Jesus, 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 this right here. But it was right. something right. about them that when you were just in their presence, you just knew it was something. Mm-hmm. And that's when one day I was talking to him and I asked him and he said that he was a pastor and I told him I said I knew I knew it was something and he was just he started laughing and he's like why would you say that I said because it's something different about you and that's when when you can be in the presence of somebody and they make you feel good and they because I'm one of those people to where if I'm off balance with somebody or my spirit does not connect with that person I know I need to kind of walk away and I feel like when you know somebody got God in them, I don't have to speak about God 110 times a day, but I guarantee you when I have a conversation, you're going to notice something different. You're going to see God through me. And I feel like that's the importance of what we have to do, especially to connect with so many different people. Right. You have to just live a life to where when you talk, they know like, oh my goodness, I want what you got. And then when we right. get talking, I'm going to introduce you to who I know. Right. Because it's like this generation now, um, I was talking with my oldest son. They are really searching for for, for truth and mm-hmm. for realness. Uh, because, you know, now we live in a, It's crazy how times have changed. Uh, I remember uh, growing up in like the 80s. Uh, to me, that's some of the greatest years of my life. I'm like the 80s and 90s. But like, yes, sir. you know, you know, like... Uh, there were certain words that were not on TV. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you would never hear a cuss word on TV. Yes. And, you know, or, or like, you knew you wouldn't see nudity on, like, TV. Well, I watched something the other day, and they're just, like, on regular TV. <laughs> and they're just, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, on like, daytime, yeah. daytime, yeah. too. You know, all kind of words, all, yeah. Kind, yeah. Of, all, all kind of profanity and... And, you know, and, and it's different. So this is a more uncut generation. And so I just believe that we have to be that much more uncut. Mm-hmm. And I think this, this generation has seen so much to where they really want what's real. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, and, uh, and that's so always been, I feel like that's always been uh, Christianity's goal is to be real and to be uncut. Because when we read the word of God, all those men and women, uh, their stories were not beautiful at all. Uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, when we read David's story, it wasn't beautiful at all. I mean, he had a lot of pain, a lot of dirt was in the story. But, but, you know, for God to use somebody like that, I mean, that's, you know, like, that's a testimony. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, it's just this this generation is just looking for those, I want to say scar people, but those people who are real that may have some scars, but that are kind of, still in that space where they just want to know it's real and yeah. when you talk they know it's real by the manner in which you live so that that's this more it's, more non-traditional they're looking for a more right. non-traditional something that they can relate to a little bit more versus how i guess early in the conversation how you said your presentation and the presentation of old as far as the suits and you coming with you know your jordans you smell good and all these other different fine garments <laughs> and I think ultimately is how you make people feel at the end of the day. And I tell yes, yes. Mo that all the time. I said, I don't care what you say to somebody, but if you, it's how you make them feel. And that's my goal all the time when I meet people, when I'm around people. I want you to feel good and I want you to enjoy being in my presence just as much as I want to enjoy being in yours. You know, but I don't think people, to go back to what you said as far as the kids and whatnot, I don't think too many people are okay with, with, I guess, abandoning ways of old to adopt the new ways that are more progressive nowadays. You you talk about as far as religion, like church no no folk? no no just as far as I mean it can, we can speak to the breath of church yes but nonetheless just in general as far as reaching different people. Well, I, think, I, think I think it's think changing people. now. I think you see that because for me, like what was different here, you know, down home in the country is lined with Baptist and AME churches, mm-hmm. you know. Right, and, um, right, right. <laughs> when we came here and we went to our first, you know, outreach 
church i was just like what is this and it was a it was a culture shock almost mm -hmm. because i was just like yeah. oh my goodness we can wear what we want to wear kind of and we could just sit here and wow. know, you know so but i think they're changing but i think what happens is and that's what one thing that you know you do a lot but you don't even realize you cannot focus on you you do it in life versus religion but you can't focus on the ones who are not doing 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 it or changing you have to focus on the people who are changing and then you have to be the change that you want to see as well within that and you know what i've also learned i have to give it to them the way that i know to give it to them i cannot give it to them the way uh minister jeremy can right here i gotta give no. it to them the way that i know how and Woo! that may be and you know what and that's and that's and, and he's, la he's laughing right so he's laughing because we was on the phone the other day he said, look here man i would like to thank you for being who you are because you're oh, very Lord. blunt and whatnot and i did not always feel comfortable being blunt because i understand that i'm an acquired taste you know what i'm saying but i'm okay with that now i'm a if you ask me my right. opinion or my stance or my views on something i gotta give it to you the way that Mo gives it to you. I'm not gonna give it to you, right, Lady Simone, right. or whatever. And I became okay with that within the recent, I'll say probably within the recent year. So that's why I would say people are looking for a little bit more, uh, more non-traditional versus a well, more traditional method of doing things. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. some, something I want to add is you can adopt the new without disrespecting the old. Yes. Uh, because, you know, one of the things that I believe that the newer generation is, is adopting now is, is honoring um, the older way of, of how they did it. Because you still need both because every yes. saint in church is not, you know, on this new way. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, you know, there, there are some people that are like, I am not listening to you without a pseudo. This is not. And, and that's OK. And they're not wrong. And we're not right. And. We're not right and they're not wrong. It's just you really need them both mm -hmm. because there's so many different sets of people and each person wants to be reached in their in their way. And so, but, you know, one of the things that, that, that has blessed me is it's just always uh, I'm, I'm talking to brothers and, and sisters now that are that are honoring our older saints. I mean, mm -hmm. it, 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 we you have to honor how, okay, because if we're honest, we're here because of them. Mm -hmm. So you yes, can't disrespect and throw away totally what they said because it was right. The method in which they said it may be different, mm -hmm. but it's still right. And so, uh, you know, that, that's something that our our generation now, to me, is doing a better job of is learning is honoring our old school saints. There is not a time where the Lord has me get up and minister that I do not honor them old school saints. Because if it wasn't for some of them, some of my grandmamas and granddaddies and aunts and uncles, we wouldn't be where we are. So that's right. Honor the honor. Because but, but their do, prayers will push you through some stuff. But do you, okay, yes. so with that being said, we're being more open. We're being more understanding of their methodology. But do you feel that's being reciprocated as far as the new way of doing things? Do you feel that the older, because I've actually experienced this in church, the older generation will look at you like, uh huh, uh huh. I think you know with time, I think they're so used to one way that it is right, hard right. sometimes for them to understand. But it's one of those things to where with time you gotta allow God to work with them how God gonna work with them. And I think through time they'll start changing. You know, not changing who they are, but they'll learn how to deal with it a little better. But mm -hmm. we can't expect them right. to just willy nilly everything they ever knew and what they knew gave them results. And what they stand on, right. because like he said, we got to honor that because there's Absolutely. some prayers um, that our grandparents and our parents done said and some songs that I don't care with this new school music. It's nothing like an old school song that it's would, no, it's you not. know, <laughs> it, it's something <laughs> about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I even right. feel like we should go back to these old time revivals and that. Yes. You know, tambourine and clapping hands and hitting now. the floor. It's like we need, I feel like sometimes every once in a while, we need that. Because mm -hmm. that just yeah. does yeah, something do. to your spirit. Yeah, That's a whole well, different feeling. It, it's a whole different feeling and it's a whole different experience. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and you know, because like you don't ever want to get to a point where 
you think your way is just, or our new school way of doing it is just the right way and theirs is wrong because mm -hmm. we need them both because off of that strength, we got to where we are right now. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I was going to say, I honestly do believe that the old, that the older saints are really starting to, to honor what it is that the new school saints is doing because it's reaching a lot of their grand, uh, grandkids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it's reaching a lot of their sons. So, you know, as once they kind of see something is working and they kind of get on that wave and they start coming to church, you know, they, you know, they uh, come to church, they make sure that they're there on youth Sunday. So, you know, you know, once they, you know, once they see that, they, they just, they're, they're really starting to honor it because they're, they're uh, starting to see that it's not just fashion and it's not just, you know, the music is just, it's, it's, it's not just hype. It's really touching the lives of their of their children and their grandchildren. So I do think that the old school saints are starting to uh, really honor us, though. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, uh, Minister Jeremy, I really appreciate your time, man. I'm sorry that we held you so long from your event. No, but, no, um, no. Always a pleasure. Y'all, uh, y'all, listen, I got a funny story about Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, okay. pretty, I'm pretty yeah. sure there's a lot of people that can have a funny story about me. <laughs> listen. Mo is the coolest person you will ever meet in your life. Okay, to me, don't ask him a question if you don't want a real answer. Listen to me. Do not ask him a question. If you, if, if you bring him some food and you say, Mo, how's the food? Terrible, yo. Terrible. He can give you that, that response. But, man, because of you, I feel like you are honestly making the world a better place, man, because, man, you know, you need people like like yourself, and, and y'all have such a good, a wonderful vibe, like, you know, Mo is so honest and so blunt, and you're so godly and so uh, energetic, and, you know, it's like, you need them both, because it's the best of both worlds. So You, you wouldn't so imagine hard. how often we bump heads on that, though. You wouldn't imagine, like, would you really, did you really have to say that just now? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. But I, I've learned how to just, you know, I learned how to just let you be. And I all I have to say a prayer before we walk in anywhere and <laughs> let God deal but with see, you. That's not, but see, it's not my intentions to ruffle feathers. It's really not my intentions. I just feel that it's not, it, with, with, there's so much of... Uh-uh, it's right, okay. okay. We right, understand. Oh, it's man, a, it's a, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> man. But, but nonetheless, yeah. man, Jeremy, I really appreciate your time, man. I really, really do, man. Yes, so thank you all for having me, man. No problem, man. So, uh, Jeremy, I'm going to call you a little bit later, man. But this is the With All Due Respect podcast. I'm your man, Mo. And to my right is Lady Simone. And our special guest today was Minister Jeremy Frazier, a.k.a. Pastor Smell Good, also a gentleman of fine garments. <laughs> <laughs>